assistant coach, Bill Collins, senior co-captain Joel Smith. Just a couple of notes here before we get uh, to coach and Joel. Uh, best start now, 7-0, best start uh, in program history since joining the CAA. Uh, it's the best conference start since a 9-0 start in 86-87, so a span of 26 years. Uh, first overtime on Brits free throws when William & Mary took the lead. It was the first time Northeastern had trailed in 142 minutes of action since the first half of the Towson game. Uh, first double overtime game for Northeastern since March 6, 2010 against Hofstra, a 74-71 in the CA tournament. Uh, career high for David Walker tonight, and Joel uh, tied a career high uh, set in the St. John's game last year. Coach, opening statement. Wow. Um, you know, for, first I have to, uh, you know, tip my hat and uh, give credit to uh, Tony Shaver and his staff and, and the William & Mary team. I thought they uh, uh, they came in and played a, a terrific second half in overtime and really battled. Um, we always seem to have a difficult time with them and, uh, you know, they, they, they run their stuff. They're very disciplined. And I thought they made big plays. Um, and really had put themselves in the position to win the game a couple of times. Uh, but I just thought it was the really the mental toughness of our senior backcourt, and particularly Joel Smith, um, who stepped up um, possession after possession uh, and, and made huge plays for us. Uh, I thought our first half was, I was extremely pleased. I thought we shared the ball as well as we did and moved the ball around as well as we have all year long. I thought our defense, um, was dialed in, and we were we were uh, executing our our scouting report, and I thought we played a very very good uh, first half. The second half got away from us pretty quickly right out of the gate, and um, you know I think you got to give credit to William and Mary. They went came out of the locker room, executed their stuff, got some easy baskets, and got some confidence up. And from then on, it was a ba basketball game, and uh, we were very very fortunate tonight to come away with the victory. Uh, uh, as I told the guys in the locker room, you, you know, there's a lot of mistakes that were made in the second half, but what I really admired was the mental toughness and, and, uh, and, and the um, togetherness that we displayed. A lot of teams, after surrendering a 15-point halftime lead, um, wouldn't be able to find a way to win. Uh, but I think uh, it speaks to this group because they stuck together, they believed in one another, um, even when, when it wasn't our best night, uh, found a way to win after after some difficult circumstances. So I was proud of that. Coach, coming into the game, you won six straight. How are you keeping guys grounded? And two? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're back in classes, back in rhythm, and, uh, and and moving along. These Wednesday games are a little bit tough for us because guys have classes all day long, and uh, I don't feel like we get our our preparation as well as we do sometimes and our focus uh, as well as we do we can on the road um, but we're, st we're still learning we're still growing and I think the best thing about this six and all start seven all start is is that we're continuing to improve and um, individuals are improving and our team play is improving and um, that that's our charge we want to keep getting better each and every day and be playing our best basketball when when Richmond comes around you said Wednesday games have been tough for you. Last week you had a big lead against Hofstra. You let that get away from you in the second half as well as tonight. Is that a, is, what, is the Wednesday, like you said, is that the reason? Uh, I think it's more CAA basketball. I mean, if you look around the league and you check the scoreboards, I mean, that's that's what it is. I mean, these coach are, the coaching staffs and the players are very, very familiar with each other. Uh, you know, Joel, how many times you played against William & Mary and run against their stuff. Uh, they're, they're familiar with our stuff. There are no secrets in the league. And I think when you get that, um, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of pride in this league. There's a lot of great coaches. There's a lot of great players. And they're just not going to go away. If you're down 15 points, we've been down 15 points and come back and won. So t teams aren't going to quit just because they get down a little bit. They're going to make a run at you. And um, I think that the biggest thing is you've got to keep your composure and, and, and find a way to win. And we were able to do that against Hofstra and, again, and then again tonight. Well, follow about keeping your composure in the overtime. <clears throat> you know, uh, like Coach said, being a, a backcourt senior leader with, along with John Lee, you know, we got to keep the young guys focused and um, dialed in the whole game. And, um, you know, I was able to do that. I was able to get going, and uh, teammates kept screening hard and playing hard. And um, luckily for me, the ball went in, and um, I could find teammates cutting and 
we, uh, you know, just played together and grinded out. Speaking of those young guys, it seems like they've just continued to grow, and it, it's been, it seems like it's accelerated especially since the New Year game, even with conference play. Uh, yeah, David, uh, you know, he's come along. He had a, a great tour in Canada this summer. And, uh, ever since then, he's been in the gym. He's a gym rat, man. I saw him in the gym today, and he's shooting, and he's shooting it confidently, and, you know, he's stepping up, making big plays, you know. Coach, uh, Shinko Marshavelski had a streak of several games where he played more than 12 minutes tonight. Sure. With double overtime, only on five minutes, was that because Zach Stahl's back from injury, or was that Aaron? No, I, I thought it was really speaks to – um, William and Mary's offense. They play a lot of four out and five out, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of screening and movement. And, you know, there's some great games, and Dicko's gonna ha has helped us and will continue to help us. But I just thought we were better staying a little bit smaller um, so we could give ourselves a chance to get out to corner shooters. They do such a great job of spreading you um, and, and taking advantage of, of bigger bodies. So, uh, you know, Dicko's worked hard. I thought. You know, he's he's earned a spot in our rotation. There are going to be nights when we're really going to count on him. But tonight, you know, coach's decision, I thought we were a little bit better going going smaller. Coach, uh, last shot of the first OT, um, you went with the lob to Walker. Was that planned? Did you know you had the fresh shot clock? Uh, there were four seconds on the clock, and we were trying to catch him. I thought we might get a foul there, too. Um, and Davey might not be, you know, we tried to use uh, – Joel to the corner on the it's a play we've run before. Um, we run Joel to the corner and see if we can get the defense going that way and try to get it. I thought Davey had a, a clean run at it. Maybe the pass was a little bit low, uh, but sometimes you get a quick foul on that and then then we'd go home. Uh, but uh, you, you know I think give William and Mary credit they 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 sniffed it out pretty good and defended it. Your front court, uh, sorry, front court went combined four for twenty one. How much of that was, was the play of their, their front court? I think very much so. I mean, Tim Ross Stolbern is one of the best uh, post players in this league. He's very, very physical. I thought he he uh, he bothered Reg uh, a lot, particularly in the first half, just walling up and being physical with him in the post. Um, and then I think Reggie kind of lost his confidence a little bit and missed, missed, missed some easy ones. And, and um, Cube's coming off a great week, uh, but they also had a, a little better match for him than some of the other teams that we've played. They're a little quicker forward, they play with a kind of a hybrid four, four man too. And he, they had a good defensive matchup for Quincy. So I think they they had two good matchups for our guys, um, and, and that might have contributed to, to to why they didn't have their typical stellar nights. How big was it the second OT to, to foul out Russell? I thought I thought it was huge. We really had. Uh, they were running plays through him. Uh, he was getting rebounds. Uh, he's he's just a terrific player. I got the utmost respect for his game. He just plays hard, buzzer to buzzer. Um, you know, he's, he's physical. He protects the rim. He protects the paint. Uh, and and they and he's a terrific passer. So when they get the ball to him on the, at the high post or or in the low post, even if you try to double him, you know, he's he's very good at finding the open man and moving the ball. So. He's, he's a good player, and, and uh, we're fortunate that he, he, he uh, fouled out of the game and gave us an opportunity to win. You guys heard from Coach Shaver. He said he came into this game really focusing on stopping the perimeter game. He wasn't nearly as worried about Reggie Spencer in the low post. He said he'd take a one-on-one -on -one matchup there all day. Do you want to talk about how confident you are that your guards, even with the game plan, so focused solely on them? And Joel, if you want to touch on this as well, how confident do you feel that you guys can still take over games more? Well, I, I mean, uh, both both John and Joel have played an awful lot of basketball here, and, and, and for me, they have an understanding of what we're trying to do. Um, they have a great sense for the moment. Uh, both guys can seize the moment. Um, and I thought Joel really kind of put us on his back, um, you know, particularly in the second overtime and, and made play after play. And then John, I think, made a huge three out of the corner um, that, that, that gave us the separation we needed. We need them to play at an elite level um, if we're going to compete for a CAA championship. And I tell these guys all the time, um, I expect that from him. I mean, quite frankly, when he's open and, and the ball doesn't go in the basket, I, uh, I'm a little bit surprised. Um, he's a terrific shooter. He understands the offense. He understands the rhythm of the game. He's got a lot of pride, and, and, and as does John. So when you have those two guys out there, I think John was listed at 50 minutes, but he didn't, he didn't get much of a break. Um, they're competitors, they want to win, and, and they're leaders. So when you have two guards like that, 
um, as a coach, you, you, you feel very, very fortunate. So it's kind of a beneficial reminder how tenuous first place can be. There's, no, there's not much difference uh, night in and night out of any team in this league. And, uh, you, you know, every game sets up differently. Matchups are different. Um, you know, you can throw the records out, uh, out the window. You just got to come in uh, ready to compete uh, for 40 minutes, keep your concentration and your focus, and play team basketball. And, uh, you know, like I said, I thought we played great, a great Brand of team basketball in the first half. We got away from that a little bit. Uh, William and Mary gained their confidence, and then we were in, 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 in a struggle. And fortunate enough to win this game against a very well coached team and a, and, a, and a very disciplined team. Coach, what's your focus going into Sunday's game against George Mason? Uh, we'll get back to practice. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the, the mistakes we made um, in this game and try to try to make some corrections and try to improve. Uh, we got to get better individually. We got to get better. Um, you know, as a unit, and and I think, uh, you know, while while uh, Dinko didn't play many minutes tonight, we're going to need him on Sunday night. Well, uh, Demetrius Paula didn't play many minutes tonight, but he he's been terrific, terrific for us all all year long. We'll need uh, some some more play from our bench um, to, if we're expecting to to continue to win in this difficult conference.